Thank you for joining us for this special 12 News report here on Facebook Live. I'm Paul Gerke. It's been nearly a month now since Kobe Bryant and eight other people died in a helicopter crash in California. January 26, 2020, the date. And now on February 24th, we are memorializing Kobe and his daughter Gianna, as well as those other lives lost that fateful day. Mark Curtis is out in Los Angeles right now, where a ceremony is expected to begin any minute now, that memorial for Kobe and Gianna. Mark, you've been out there for a little while now. What's the scene like out there? Let's start with that. Well, well you know, it, it's interesting because looking at it from afar, Paul, when it first happened, I think, you know, as a sports fan, as an NBA fan, uh, knowing what Kobe meant to the NBA, you have a certain sense of it. But when you get here in L.A., outside the Staples Center, the, in quotation marks, house that Kobe built, that's when you get a real sense of what the loss of Kobe Bryant means to this city. Uh, they have completely shut down media this morning. We tried to talk to a couple of people, and we were able to talk to one before they uh, abruptly ended our interview. And I said, for someone from Phoenix, can you explain what the loss of Kobe Bryant means. And this guy was wearing a Kobe Bryant jersey, and he said, imagine cutting the soul out of your city. That's what Kobe Bryant meant to this town. It went way beyond what he did on the basketball floor for all of his 20 pro seasons. It was, it was about the spirit that he brought. It was about the five NBA rings that he brought to this city. It was about how he continued to stay here and give back to the community. And then, of course, as he retired and his kids were growing up, all of a sudden now his daughter, his young daughter, Gianna, becomes a basketball star in her own right. And he starts the Mamba Sports Academy. And, of course, that's our Phoenix connection, aside from him playing for the Lakers and just putting a beating on the Suns all of those times and the, the back and forth between Suns fans and Kobe Bryant. There was a mutual respect, to be sure. But then he comes there as a coach of his daughter's team and, and starts interacting and, and was a huge, huge believer in women's sports and the WNBA and in, in young girls playing basketball. And uh, it, it just shows you the depth of this man, an Academy Award winner when he produced a short film. He was a spectacular man in many regards, and I think that um, that's why this whole town, and especially out here at the Staples Center this morning, you see this sea of purple and gold and everyone wearing the Kobe Bryant jerseys. And, and the other interesting thing, Paul, is, I don't know if you're into numbers or not, but 224, February 24th, that's the day the ceremony is happening. That was his jersey number, two, of course, signifying the, the month February. And, and there's a lot of numerology that goes into his daughter's jersey. So it's very interesting. And I, and I know that his wife, Vanessa, was very instrumental in planning this celebration of life, which will get underway in about an hour here this morning. We heard that uh, Vanessa will be among those in attendance. I did a little research on this, Mark, and discovered that the Staples Center seats about 20,000 people for events like this. That's about how many uh, they had for Michael Jackson's similar ceremony there more than a decade ago back in 2009. Um, do you know if the Staples Center is going to be at capacity? I heard they're telling people to stay out of that area today if they don't have tickets to the uh, celebration of life that you're at. I was watching local TV this morning before I left the hotel. And that's the message from every local news team is if you do not have tickets, don't think you're going to come down here and be able to score or scalp some tickets. It's just not happening. It is at capacity. In fact, for the media, there's a standing room only section uh, to watch this. And most of the media will be watching on their, on their digital devices, their iPhones or their iPads, and uh, keeping track of the, of the live stream of this. Um, it's... It is standing room only. It's expected to go for about three hours, and uh, we don't know. They've been keeping the, the guest list very close to the vest. Some people are speculating that there could be some very important people, possibly even a former president here. Uh, and I'm talking about Barack Obama. We mm -hmm. haven't confirmed that, but there is some speculation with the super tight security that uh, there will be some very important people here today, both speaking and watching.
Mark, you spoke of the numerology a second ago. Two, the number that Gianna wore when she played basketball. 24, one of the numbers that Colby wore. Eight being the other during his time with the Lakers. I heard the ticket prices also reflect those numbers this morning, Mark. 2402 for the cheapest ticket, 224 for the most expensive. What do they charge you? Well, thank God I didn't have to pay. Um, I, I, someone wasn't going in. I was expecting to watch it on my phone, but I found out about a half hour ago that uh, one of our, our comrades at NBC will not be going in, and I'm going to get his ticket, and uh, I will be able to watch it in person, but uh, otherwise uh, I'd be watching on a live stream like everyone else. But, yeah, the, no one cared about what they paid. They wanted to be a part of this moment. Uh, in part to pay homage to Kobe Bryant, in part to witness history, and in part because uh, this will be it. Of course, Kobe was, was, has already been buried, so this will be their last chance to, to say goodbye to this guy who meant so much to this city, uh, to this franchise, and obviously to the NBA. You plucked my next thought right from my head, Mark. I was going to say, you see the Staples Center shop behind you. All of those public memorials that were once sort of pockmarking the front of that building are all gone now. They've all been cleaned up. This is the last chance for the public. Kobe laid to rest February 7th in Southern California. Once today passes, it really is time for everybody to move on, but this is their public chance. This is their chance to, to actually say goodbye in some formal way besides leaving you know, something out in front of Staples Center. That's, that's a great point, and, and, and I was thinking as I came in, you know, how many times do you see an instance where everyone is united in one cause? So everyone coming in here today wants to be a part of it, wants to claim their little piece of Kobe Bryant. Whether I was an, a Laker fan, whether I was an NBA fan, I'm a Los Angelino, I had and Kobe had a connection. And I want to pay homage to that connection by being here if I could get a ticket. And I'm going to wear my Kobe jersey proudly. And I'm going to be able to say to my kids, to my grandkids one day, or even if I don't have kids, that I was a part of that. And I did the right thing. When, when Kobe passed, I was able to go there and say goodbye to him the right way. And, and no doubt, if you uh, look at the ratings here uh, after this is all over uh, tomorrow, this memorial service will get a huge rating, at least in Los Angeles, because it's must-see viewing for anyone who lived in this city. Paul, even if they weren't an NBA fan, people in this town deeply and truly cared about Kobe Bryant. And I find that really funny, Mark, um, even if you weren't an NBA fan you know, nationwide when this, when this tragedy happened back in January. The first thing that starts to come out once the details are all sorted out are the stories. You know, the unspoken stories that you, you, know, you hear about in 30 for 30s a decade from now, but like just the little things, Kobe's interaction with other people, whether it's his teammates or friends or family members. Have you heard any interesting anecdotes since you've been out in L.A. and, and covering this? Uh, you know, I really haven't, but I, but I think it's sort of the, the Kevin Bacon situation, the, the, you know, eight degrees of separation. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to say somehow. And, and, and look, honestly speaking, we're no different. We're, we're dying in the Phoenix media at, at 12 to be able to claim our little piece of, of Kobe Bryant, that, that he was a, a, a hated rival against the Suns, that he came in and, and broke Suns fans' hearts a couple of times a year when he would come there. Um, but also that he was a guy that even if you hated him as a fan, you respected him as a player, you respected him as a man, you kind of embraced the change that he went through after his, his trouble off the court and that he truly seemed to, to try to his best to become a better man, a, a better husband, a better father, to get involved in his daughter's life through basketball, to create this sports academy, the Mamba Sports Academy, uh, he, a successful businessman in any, many ways. So I think everybody wants to claim their little connection to Kobe Bryant. <laughs> Mark, I've got to share mine before we move on. I may have shared this at some sort of, uh, on one of the live streams we've done uh, right after the tragedy. But as you know, I'm a Michigander. I uh, grew up a Detroit Pistons fan, so the 2004 NBA Finals, were that was my Kobe moment because I watched the Pistons, this underdog team, more or less sweep the Lakers. They called it a five-game sweep. The only reason the Lakers won a game in that series is because Kobe Bryant went supernova in the fourth quarter and stole one so that even in spite of, of getting swept in the NBA Final, Kobe still got his pound of flesh from the Detroit Pistons. And I remember sitting there and watching it 
And it's, he's like a human natural disaster, Mark, when he was in his prime. And you, there's just nothing you could do about it. You felt powerless. Well, you know, look, we're both former sports guys and, and, and watched him uh, from a sportscaster vantage point, watched him from a fan vantage point. And, and think about the players in our lifetime, Paul, that you could say you don't want this guy to get the ball at the end of the game. A guy who, through sheer will, could take over a game, score points in bunches, score points at the worst possible time for your team, and take a game back under control, under his wing. And Kobe Bryant was one of the few players who, at least in my time, off the top of my head here as we stand here this morning, that I could say, oh, my God, do not let him get the ball. <laughs> do whatever you have to do, but don't let Kobe get the ball because he, he was the quintessential I want the ball for the last second shot guy. And nine times out of ten, he would break your heart. That's what made Hackashack so effective, too. Not just that Shaquille O'Neal couldn't shoot free throws, but you also took the ball out of Kobe's hands, too. Uh, let's get serious about the specifics for just a second here, Mark. We've heard that there are a lot of streaming options for this if you'd like to watch the ceremony at home. I believe NBA TV is streaming, but we are as well right here on the 12 News Facebook page. Um, and, Mark, you said you're going to actually be inside for the ceremony. I know you said details are sparse, security is tight. Do you know anything about how the next three or four hours are going to play out there at the Staples Center? Here's what I can tell you. The, the ceremony, it's, uh, it's 9, 10 here. It starts at 10 o'clock, roughly. It's expected to go for about three hours. Uh, no doubt it will be longer than that because these things always are. They never go as scheduled. They're never shorter. They're oftentimes longer, and my guess this one will be longer. So uh, uh, sometime around 1 o'clock local, 2 o'clock Phoenix time, uh, this thing will wrap up. That's all I can tell you. I know that many of the Boston Celtics players who were here yesterday because the Lakers played the Celtics will be in attendance today. Obviously, all of the Laker greats, including Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, will be in attendance. No doubt many NBA Hall of Famers will be here in attendance. But beyond that, as far as the celebrities in attendance, as far as people performing or speaking, I can't tell you. Mark, I don't mean to be your uh, scheduling manager, but I know that you're going to be live in the 4, 5, and 6 o'clock shows this afternoon on 12 News. I know you also said that one of your interviews was cut short a little earlier. Do you know what sort of access you're going to have, whether it's to those celebrities or, or just to the fans out there at the memorial to show their love and support? Let me, let me just tell you this. We have been told at least a dozen times that we can't shoot our camera, that anything that's coming out of here is supposed to be on the live stream. Of course, being, being the special agent that I am, along with <laughs> photographer Chris Peterson and our sports producer Jeff Schneider, we'll try to get whatever we can. We'll certainly be tr attempting. Now, if, if I come on the air at 4 o'clock and I look a little beat up, you'll know what happened. But sure. uh, in all seriousness, they are very strict and very tight about doing any interviews. And, and of course, you want that. You want to hear what the people had to say, especially after watching this ceremony, which will no doubt be inspirational, uh, but also very emotional and very sad at times. And I just want to pass along uh, one quick note. You know, we, we've talked about this Mamba Foundation. It was just announced in the last couple of minutes that Vanessa Bryant is changing it to the Mamba and Mamba Sita, his daughter, uh, foundation. Yeah, that part... Um Definitely uh, not overlooked in this ceremony today. We talk a lot about Kobe because we got to watch him play basketball for two decades. But yeah, his and, and you know what? Good player, I'm glad you. I'm glad you said. That. Yeah, I, everybody thought that she was going to follow in her father's footsteps. Who know knows what uh, she would become if she played in college ball? But she certainly seemed to have all of the tools and uh, received that great genetic gift uh, from Kobe Bryant to to play this sport. Um, it's it's a day that I, I feel honored to it's one of those days and, and we've all had them Paul where mm -hmm. you you kind of step outside of your body and you you fight hard not to be a fanboy and not to uh, to be able to soak this in and at the same time do your job and I think it's going to be tough for all of us because he was a spectacular player and no matter how you feel about Kobe Bryant the man uh, there is no taking away from what he was able to accomplish in his 20 seasons on the floor. All right, Mark, we know security is tight. We'll let you and the crew go inside and uh, 
shoot camera first, ask questions later, as they say in the business. Um, be safe out there. We'll see you on that's, first at four. That's the plan. Forget, we are streaming the ceremony right here on the 12 News Facebook page. Talk to you in a bit, Mark.